artificial intelligence, blockchain, virtual reality, internet of things, quantum computing, technologies disrupting the world, and unless I use your fear of missing out to bombard you with all of these buzzwords, the two people sitting beside you, 50% of them will not survive 2018. <laughs> That's the message we get, right? That's the message we get individually. That's the message that permeates through our organizations. And that's the message that our societies and governments are confronting. And yet, and look, there's value to that. I'm Hamoon, and I run an organization called Audacious Futures. And so by the name of that, we should be riding this train and laughing our way to the bank. But I'm here tonight to tell you, I don't believe that's our path to the future. I don't believe that if we continue down this path, we'll get to where we need to go. And because if we continue by being enamored by the silver bullets and jumping on the bandwagons left, right, and center, we'll end up in an as unfortunate of a place as the decision I made to make these words that wide. <laughs> and so if you think about that, then you wonder, what does that mean? Where is it that we're going to go? So what I'd like to do tonight is talk to you about cars, organs, and philosophy. I was reading a story about this innovative new car and a woman who unfortunately had a really bad accident. It uh, and a lot of people were worked up about this. It was a new car that had come out. Some of you might have heard about this. It was this, right? It was the Uber in Arizona, a self-driving car. It just happened earlier this year. Well, not quite. This was actually 1896. It was the first recorded incident of someone being killed in a car accident. We have this weird relationship with technology where we keep going through the same cycle. We get excited about the latest new thing, then at some point we get afraid of it and have a knee-jerk reaction. Eventually we come around to it and say, oh, it's gonna be okay, and we adapt and move on, and then we go on finding the next new shiny object to follow, and that cycle continues. You don't believe me? That's okay. The consultants, it's so regularly happening that the consultants made a graph about it, called it the hype cycle of technology, and make money off of telling us where on the curve we are every other year. <laughs> and so how do we get out of this vicious cycle? How do we get out? I don't have all the answers, but I think where we might need to start is a mindset shift. And that mindset shift is from technology as gospel to technology as a value-neutral tool whose value will be determined by our values. And that shift is about a shift from this human versus machine debates that we keep going through to a fundamentally different conversation around human plus machine. And I think for us to be able to bring that potential to life, we need to activate three key superpowers that come to life from the human and machine equation. The first one is collective imagination. We talked about self-driving cars, and you might know that by experts are saying it, they're so safe that we're actually gonna have to find new organ donors. Why? Because accidents, car accidents, are the primary source of organ donations. Now, organ donations are not the only place where we need reimagining. If you think of cities, self-driving cars, a city like LA, 10 to 15% made up of only parking spaces. And so with self-driving cars being there, we don't need that space, and so we have a chance to reimagine the city from the ground up. And it's not just the cities that require imagination. There's an entire global footprint of opportunities for us to pursue. The second superpower is around collective intelligence. They say two minds are better than one. Than one. I'm gonna actually argue with that. I'm gonna give you something better. I'm gonna give you all of our collective minds plus all the machine power. How about that? And the way we're, we're going to have to be able to have access to all of that power on the cloud, supported by increasingly limitless uh, computing power. And so for us, what that enables, as we talked about the organ donation issue, we've already started actually solving for this. With crowdsourcing and AI, we're able to find live match donors much more effectively than we were previously able to. Now, this is actually an intelligence and superpower that we use quite regularly. So the real question here is whether we're going to use that power for the problems that matter most to us. And at the risk of offending all the dog lovers in this room, rather than using all that intelligence to build Fitbits for dogs and $400 juicers startups that go bust after a couple of years. That brings us 
brings us to our third superpower. And the third superpower is around our collective consciousness. Religion and history have shown us over thousands of years that while we're attracted to the new and the shiny, what really stands the test of time is the timeless. Our ethics, our morals, our values. And yes, it is great that we're increasingly talking about the importance of ethics in AI, but I think we forget, we treat it as if it's out there and we forget that it's actually part of who we are. It is our ethics that are showing up in our technologies. So we talk about AI and bias, and we forget that it comes from us. We get excited about uh, blockchain becoming the next currency overnight, and we never take the time to address the complicated relationship we have with money. We get really pumped up about virtual reality technology and what it's going to do, and we forget that all of us are already living in our own virtual realities. And so I guess the point I'm getting at is if we live in an age where technology is transforming humanity, and if tech humanity is starting to raise technology as a parent might a child, and if humanity and technology are coming together increasingly as an integrated unit, what will be our saving grace? I believe our saving grace will be putting these superpowers to the problems that matter most, but that will require us to have a level of curiosity more than we normally do, to have a level of uh, compassion beyond what we would just expect of our close circles, and to have a level of courage to face our darker shadows. And so perhaps, perhaps with elevated wisdom, with collective intelligence, as well as a better ability to understand how we bring technology and humanity together. Perhaps, finally, once and for all, we will be able to define and decide on the values we need in our technologies to design and create the audacious futures we desire. Thank you very much.